just scanned it and it looks safe. The Fuck element it. of morality is one of the more misguided factors with respect Toronto, to the rule of law. Of this is because it is often too closely associated with innocence and guilt, not only by the layperson in wider society, but even by some working within the justice system. The most important thing to remember is that just because someone is a bad person, it doesn't mean they are at fault of breaking the law. It might seem like an obvious predisposition to have, yet this can, and often has, been a predominant factor that has swayed a jury inside a courtroom. We could use the ongoing trial of Harvey Weinstein as a current example. He is facing multiple counts of sexual assault and rape, which now have to be proven by the state if he is to face charges. What doesn't need proving is that Weinstein is a terrible person. Most in the entertainment industry already saw him as an overbearing, egotistical chauvinist, even before the allegations came out. And further testimony has essentially driven the point home beyond assumption. Yet it could be argued that the prosecution have now overused this evidence, and have overreached in their strategy to attack the character of the One defendant. This could allow the defense to create a counter-narrative, being that Weinstein had become an easy target for false accusations due to the ugly nature of his character, and that a snowball effect essentially created a witch hunt, aimed at a highly unlikable, yet ultimately innocent person. This isn't necessarily the approach the defense will adapt, yet demonstrates how the miscorrelation between immorality and criminality have dire consequences for the state. This not only applies to what takes place inside the courtroom, but also to what transpires long beforehand. And this is the reason criminal investigators are taught not to get emotionally invested in a case, as their own biases can affect best practice. An accurate example could be the interview of Christian Allison, whose husband Clayton was suspected of murdering their 15-month-old daughter. He was alone at home with the toddler while Christian was out for work, and was allegedly in the bathroom unclogging the toilet when his wife returned home to make a gruesome discovery. She found her daughter lying unconscious at the bottom of the stairs and was completely unresponsive. Christian screamed, then immediately called 911, and the toddler was flown by helicopter to a hospital in Anchorage, where doctors found blood around her brain, a bruised lung, and two dislocated vertebrae. The girl died that night. Her cause of what death was declared as traumatic brain injury, which her father stated was caused by falling down the stairs. Yet Alaska state troopers discovered the stairs were carpeted, thus couldn't have caused the fatal trauma. And the fact they were guarded with a baby gate made it even less plausible. He became the prime suspect when the autopsy report came in, but was not immediately arrested. They first decided to call in his wife Christiane to see if she would cooperate by getting him to either admit his guilt or at least garner some sort of damning testimony to use against him. We're at a point in the investigation where either you're on the side of Jocelyn or you're on the side of Clay. Don't say that. That's where we you're are. You're putting yourself... I'm putting myself where? You're putting yourself in a position saying that they automatically want me to be angry with you. So well, don't do that, please. You can... you... Because you, I want to be cooperative, I want to be helpful, but do not make a woman stand between her husband and her daughter. Well, you have to choose. No, I don't. Okay. I can just Here's as equally love my carpet daughter is like, and believe that it was an... Was it carpet is like water in the source engine? <clears throat> okay. I mean, it does dampen the, the fucking hits, so it could make it less likely that someone got, like, serious brain, uh, serious brain injury from just, like, hitting soft carpet. An accident. Okay, well, it's As not a, can, it's a homicide. We know it's, that it's, this we're was a homicide according to the evidence that they had. It's, it's ruled a homicide due, based on the injuries that your child had. She went right. from this, okay, to this. She has bruises all over her head. The investigator has just thrust a photo of the mother's deceased daughter right in front of her face. Christiane was being questioned as a witness, not a suspect. She hadn't been read her Miranda warning, and the purpose of the interview wasn't to elicit signs of guilt, only to collect right. a statement and to discuss possible cooperation. What the detective has just done is a technique used to gauge a person's response, especially if the photographs being presented are of a gruesome nature. The sharp manner in which the images are presented is done so a suspect is caught off guard, and this is thought 
out to make it harder for them to fabricate emotion in a convincing manner. It's an effective interrogative technique, yet most often exclusively used on suspects due to its traumatic nature. Christiane was not a suspect, therefore her response to the photographs were of no use to the investigation. It's a rookie mistake from the detective, as this has now destroyed the possibility of rapport development, and this segment of the interrogation was also used by her husband's defense to portray a corrupt and negligent police department. Okay, this, this is all bruising, okay? It's not from tumbling down carpeted stairs, okay? Here's the autopsy photos. The autopsy photos. Some of the autopsy photos. Here's your baby. Bro, are you fucking insane, dude? Are you out of your fucking mind? You're just gonna like... <clears throat> be completely unacceptable. Like... Barely acceptable to do it with like someone who you, who you kind of suspect is uh, the person. Preposterous! Like, oh hey, what's up, young mom? Here's your dead baby. Okay, right. sick. Okay, this is trauma. This is trauma. This is your baby's brain. Okay. <laughs> you know what else is trauma? What the mom has right now because. You just forcibly fucking w made her watch some shit that she definitely did not want to see. That she is not benefiting from seeing at all, dude. Holy crap, what a psycho. Not necessarily a tumble. Like this is, down the stairs. This is all, this is all trauma. This is all, this is all trauma. Which isn't caused by her bumping into things because there's nothing on that one goes. You know that a lot of the JCS videos are actually copyright claimed by detectives that were portrayed negatively by him. You can see a list of his deleted videos and they're copyrighted by detectives. Shut the fuck up. Are you serious? Okay, this is all trauma. You you need to know that this. That shows her face. Can you please not show me that one? CJ. Or at least don't show me her face this mutilated is, like that. This is reality. This is this is you're gonna have to you're gonna have to look at this because your baby was your baby was murdered. Uh, I'm asking you to help us. We, we need an answer. For I am willing to answer any question you want me to answer. Honestly, I don't know what you expect of me. I don't know if you expect me to walk in this door for you to tell me that, for me to break down crying and say, oh, it's all a farce. I've been completely truthful for you, to you this Nobody's entire you time. I'm going to be completely truthful to you. For the record, for what it's worth, I don't believe that the cops have rights to this footage. I'm pretty sure this is a matter of public record and you can't fucking copyright shit like that. The rest of the whole thing, the way that this goes, and I'm being co completely cooperative and I always have been. This goes back to what was stated earlier about the miscorrelation between guilt and immorality. Christiane appears unusually composed and articulate considering the circumstances. This could of course and be due to part. shock or voluntary detachment as a means of coping, but also due to the possibility that she is unaffected over the tragic death of her own daughter, which could bring one to assume that she may not have been a loving mother. This may be frowned upon, yet does not mean she is being untruthful in any way, nor guilty of any wrongdoing in the eyes of the law. In in fact, the manner of her response, being composed yet assertive, could be argued as the disposition of someone with nothing to hide. She comes across as annoyed at the way she is being treated, yet is not anxious or concerned in any way. Okay, well here's, here's what we want you so to do. So ask your questions and I'll give here, you your answer. Here's what we want you to do, okay? We want you to make a phone call to Clayton and we want you to let us record it. That's what, that's what we want you to do. And what am I supposed to do in this phone call? You're, you're supposed to, you're gonna um, talk to him, okay? You're gonna, you're gonna say, if we ruled it a homicide, you were the last one with Jocelyn, what happened? She didn't, they're telling me she didn't get the injuries from falling down the stairs. What happened? Oh my God. Oh my God. I think it's because the UK copyright laws are probably different. This part of the video is probably available, but the second part might have gotten copyrighted. Just like the fucking Prince Andrew video was taken off. Ah, that doesn't make sense, though. Because there was hella Prince Andrew videos out there. They didn't all get copyrighted. Aiden, bruv! I'm not talking shit shy about the fucking UK, governor! 
We're going to watch a fucking UK murder later. All right. Second half of this, bruv. He's a fucking UK murder in it. I'm not going to do that. Okay. Then I'm going to ask you why. Because I am the type of person that would feel like I was lying to my husband if I didn't automatically say. Don't this, worry, this Aiden. Aiden, don't fucking worry, Aiden. It's coming home, all right? It's coming home, Governor. It's coming fucking home. Fuck the Euros. We're going to be fucking doing a, a, the second half of this video is going to be about a fucking UK brav murder. Don't worry, it's coming home. If you let me say that, I'll do that just fine. Well, he's not going to talk on a recording line. He's not going to tell you the truth. He hasn't told you the truth, I'm, no. I'm a truthful person and that's deceitful to me and I won't do that to my husband. It's not, it's not dece deceitful. It's this is deceptive. where you have to, this is it's where you have to. deceptive. And okay, I won't and you want it. answers? You want answers? Do you want to know if Clayton did this? Yeah, I do, and I'm going to ask him. I was just going to. I'm here to see how cooperative you are, and you're not. The detective now insinuates that suspicions of the witness are now developing, potentially for the purpose of making her anxious and thus more prone to being cooperative. I am cooperative. I'm. I'm telling you a legitimate reason. I will not uh, okay. be deceptive I'm to telling my you, spouse. I'm telling you that your child did not die from falling down the stairs. And do you think that if you were in my position and you 100% didn't believe I that, want to know. that you would do this? 100%? You saw the pictures of your baby's head. 100% don't believe it. And head. I 100% don't believe it. Body language readings can never be given full credibility, yet Christiane's motions are textbook of a truthful subject. She has a forward-leaning posture, maintains eye contact, and her hands are pointing directly at the interrogator while she makes her assertion. She is not seeing- I love whenever JCS says, what I'm about to say is a uh, hokum, pseudoscience, but I'm gonna say it anyway. He really has a way with uh, delivering pseudoscientific nonsense that I, I truly appreciate. Seeking approval, only trying to get her message across in a direct manner. When Jocelyn went in for the emergency surgery, um, they opened up, um, they opened up her, her uh, skull, and the dura was very tense, and of course it was bulging and it, it popped. You know, like uh, what do you call those? Uh, the poppy dose things. So it was. There was so much trauma there. That it was yeah, I remember the surgeon described it to me beautifully. More unnecessary graphic detail given to a witness. This was once again used by Clayton's defense team during his trial. So if yeah. I don't agree to this, what do you do? This is what is known as making the video as shitty as possible in an effort to see if people are still watching technique. Oftentimes utilized by those who do true crime videos. The technique makes it so hard to watch a video that it's no longer, um, it's no longer 1880p. It's not even 144p. It's just a, just a dark sequence of shadows. Well, but if you don't agree to it, you don't agree to it. And the only thing left is we go and we talk to Clayton. That's probably where we're at because honest, I'm just going to be flat honest with you. Even if I 100% believe that he done it, which I don't, mm -hmm. I still couldn't do that. Okay. I, to me, there is deceitful and there is not deceitful, and that's uh, deceptive okay. to me. And I cannot do that to my husband. I can't. Let me just be blunt. Let me just be blunt with you because that's, that's, that's all right. The detective now repeats her strategy of trying to induce anxiety. It once again fails, and Christiane displays all the signs of a truthful subject. Did you have any part? Did you ever shake Jocelyn? No. Did you ever throw her in your bed out of uh, out of out of frustration? No. Okay. What's your part in this? What's your part in Jocelyn's death? Nothing. Except for not being there. What's your obligation to Jocelyn now?
that's your only obligation? Okay. To love her, isn't that to find out what happened to her? Such a good cop, dude. It's crazy. I expected a reaction from you. I expected you to go, oh my god, what? cry. I, I, I did. I expected I you know. to be, oh my god. I know. Yeah. This is what is known as admitting that you fucked up technique. <clears throat> it's only reserved for some of the most, some of the most important moments, okay? Where you just, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> I apologize. Fuck, I'm so hot. It's used in unique circumstances where the cop has completely fucked up and decides there's no reason in hiding it anymore. Just like there's no reason to hide this ad break because everybody knows it's coming. That's why every time I get closer to the top of the hour, like the actual top of the hour, chatters lose their mind and start doing Pago Tomato time. Yes, top of the fucking hour is here. Yes, it's a 60 second ad break. Yes, you can avoid those ads if you subscribe or if you use an ad blocker or a VPN. Yes, subscriptions are either uh, free with a Twitch Prime or $5. These are all facts. Here's the ad break now. Here's the video. I afford myself that luxury. Why not? What you say is too I'm important. so hot! I'm gonna fucking is die! It, oh my god! Words are too important. Words are absolutely important. And so and I'm controlling every word that I say, or at least attempting to. That is my goal here. And oh. it will not change until I walk out of that door. Okay. When I walk out of that door, I'll probably fall apart. Well? But right now, I'm being a politician. I, I, I'm, I'm shocked. I'll tell you, I'm shocked. I can't believe as a mother, after everything that I've presented in front of you, you can say, he didn't do this. You can say, he didn't do this. Let me ask you straight out, did you love Jocelyn? Yeah, I loved her more than anything in the world, and I still do. More than anything in the world? More than anything? Yeah. But you won't. You, you, you're a smart lady. I've given yeah, you I'm everything. I'm a smart lady. I've given you everything. And you said you don't even believe you. Zero percent. You know, there's no, there's not even I'm an ounce of doubt in you. I'm not don't saying Don't tell doubt. me. Don't tell me that you loved your baby with an ounce of doubt. Beyond. I'm not saying beyond. there's not an ounce of doubt. Yeah. I'm saying I don't believe what you're telling me zero percent because I'm not going to say that I do. I'm saying, I'm not saying that I don't doubt things. I doubt lots of As things. As a mother. I doubt lots more than the world. of things. Okay, you guys were right. Howdy, partner. One of the fucking JCS videos was literally removed by the dude. Fucking Jim Stewart! Fuck out tomato time, Jim Stewart! Let me use your that words. That doesn't mean that I'm more than you agree with more what than you're telling world. me now. You love Jocelyn more than you loved your own life, right? Yeah. My God, that's what I would do for my kid. You love Jocelyn more than you love your own life, more than you love anything, above anything else on, on this on God's green earth, you yeah. love Jocelyn. Whether it be an instance of getting emotionally invested or an overzealous attempt at building a case, the investigator aggressively refutes the witness claims that she... You know who would never do that? Jim Smith, by the way. Like, never in a million years. Because he's never looked bad in an interrogation. He would never do a copyright takedown. She loves her daughter due to the fact that she refuses to conspire against her husband. Logical thinking could bring one to assume that Christiane is telling the truth. She has just lost her daughter, something most mothers would indeed love more than anything in the world, yet her daughter is now gone, and her husband is essentially all she has left. Christiane had come from an abusive background. She has no family apart from her husband and his family. He is her main support system, and someone to share and divide grief with, regardless of any potential culpability. It's an abstract and even disturbing thought to try and contemplate, yet her behavior in this moment is not that uncommon. Even though she had doubts about her husband, she still loved him, and the tragic nature of her circumstances could even amplify this feeling. She may have also been in the first stage of grief, being shock and denial. 
I've presented experts, experts, evidence, experts, and you're telling me he didn't do it. You didn't you, love Jocelyn. Do you just, you. Do you just absorb you. everything that everyone sends to I you do. as 100% truth? No, I take it you in. You take it with a grain of salt, and that is what I'm doing. I don't believe anything until I've thought about it, I've prayed about it, and I've come to my decision. Because life is too short for rash decisions. It was too short for Jocelyn. Yeah, it was only 15 months. It was hella months. too short. It was only 15 months, and her own father, at the hands of her own father, shook her to death. And by God, her I wonder at what point does it change from... Doing an interrogation to just like abusing a grieving mother. You know what I mean? Mother so doesn't want to know you're the telling truth. Me. Her mother doesn't want to know yes, the truth. Yes, I do. And don't you dare say that I don't. Make the phone call. I'll make the phone call if I can tell him it's being recorded. There's a big difference between wanting to know the truth when you believe you can get it, 100%. Like I said before, you make every decision Excuses. in life based on your decisions, based on your beliefs, based on the knowledge you have Excuses. in front of you. And and you're being and contradictory. And this is the knowledge I have in front of me. No, I am not. You are being contradictory. I have not contradicted myself yet. You I have said this is where I stand on it, and I'm not changing my mind. Yeah, but then you've fluctuated between whether you, you, you believe him, you believe him, you believe him. He said she fell down the stairs. I'm just going to believe that. I, I'm just going to believe that. I've presented experts. Experts that said... So how have I fluctuated? That this hasn't happened. How because have I fluctuated? You, because you've said you wanted to know. Because you've said I do that you're want a blunt, to know, and person. I will know. I will find out. I have no fear of that. I don't have to make a phone call in your office on a recorded line to find that out for myself. Black and white, he lied. This man that you trusted, that you guys, you would never be deceitful. Thought that you weren't worth enough, worth it enough to be honest with you. Bro, at this point. Even if she's the murderer, or even if the husband is the murderer, she's doing such a terrible job that there is <clears throat> zero chance that she's going to arrive at the truth. Like, she's just completely fucking shut off. Why would she ever coll uh, uh, collaborate with you? To tell you what happened to your child, who you love more than the world. He lied. That means nothing to you. Your husband was deceitful. This will do nothing to help her. I am smart enough to know that my daughter is not coming back from the dead. Christian now starts to compartmentalize the situation to justify her standing. If she was a suspect, this could be used to argue that she knows her argument is dubious. Yet, as earlier stated, her refusal to conspire against her spouse is not illegal. It also seems like she is trying to convince herself that she is doing the right thing, more so than she is trying to convince the interrogators. Mm -mm. There is nothing on this earth that is going to help her. It'll help me. It'll help how I feel. It'll help you. It'll help how you feel. It'll help him and whatever happens to him, whatever the truth is, and whatever all that bunch of stuff. But it's not going to help her. There's nothing on this earth that can help her. It's a greater good. It's a greater, greater good. Greater good, my yeah. ass. It's a greater good. Greater you good, my obligation. ass. Don't you have an obligation? No. You don't have an obligation. I have an obligation to be a citizen, to tell the truth, which I have done, to be cooperative without being deceitful, which I have done. He can't no. make you do it. We're no, not going to make justice, you do it. Obviously. It's, it's just justice. really kind of upsetting and disturbing to me personally to see this kind of reaction and justification and reluctance to kind of have an open mind about what happened. It's really upsetting and disturbing to me.
You don't even want to know what happened to Jocelyn. I'm showing you a picture of what if happened to Jocelyn. If I showed you that Jocelyn. picture of your child, would you want I'd that be picture on the embedded phone. in your mind for I'd the rest of your phone. life? Would you want to face that picture in I'd your dreams? I'd be on the phone. Would you want to face it at night at every day? I would. You know how hard it is for me to face it at night? The way I she would. looked laying in the hospital bed in one piece? I would. Do you know what that's like looking at your child that way? I would. You don't. When have you looked at your child looking like that? I haven't. So you don't know. So don't accuse me of not wanting to look at the picture because I don't want to know the truth. I don't want to look at the picture because I don't want to see that picture every time I go to sleep. That's what Regardless of what happened to her. You. Regardless of what your happened to her. I don't. At this point, it's like the cop I just got murdered. Months, so I, have I mean, finally delivered our baby to the world. I hope she will. I said, if she just cornered the fucking cop. I will name him Ben after my hero Ben Shapiro. Please grow him to become Holy a promising shit. leader what for our great nation. Holy shit! What the fuck does she? Does she I bet she doesn't even get like paid leave because of this. She's no suspension. Probably a promotion. Want that picture you. in my Your head? Husband deceived and there you. is nothing wrong with that. Your husband deceived you. I he mean, makes love to you knowing that he did this to Jocelyn. What That's the fuck? deceit. This is, I tell this you, is just a picture. This is just a picture that was taken of something that your husband did. This is just a piece of paper with color on it. You can be mad at us for a picture. No, I can be mad at you for choosing to show me a picture I don't want to see and but, accusing me of not wanting to know the truth because I won't look at it. But it's a very different thing. But you're not mad at Clayton for causing that. Dude, what is this fucking Reddit debate lord energy right now? Like, one of the most psychotic, this is one of the most psychotic interrogations I've ever seen in my entire life, dude. They're just like. The worst part is like, she's not even a suspect. Like, Thanks, she's literally a a witness like they want her to give the they're trying to coerce testimony out of her that will corroborate the the opinions that they have on this matter it's fucking insane it's so crazy dude this is actually wild that damage to your child you'd want to see that picture of your child whether you believe you would know or not if you believe that you would know and I'd you didn't want to see that picture I, I would. you'd want you know to see what? it I, i'd ask to go to the autopsy i'd ask to do that I, that's me because i have to know because i'm black and white okay well it's because not your I child laying on that table need to know okay it's not I've your child children. laying on that table. I've had children in the hospital. I've had children. You've that are never sick. had a child I've never die. Lost a child. You can't imagine it. You're absolutely right. I cannot imagine it. So don't tell me I how you would be, be because I can tell you what. I run through this scenario a hundred times in my head before she died, and you have no fucking idea. We're asking None. you to help us. We're asking you. To Wait, why? That's kind of crazy. To help us. You're asking me to help you with something that can only help you and possibly me if you believe that I'm going it's, to deceive you, you myself. Seek, you want to seek the truth. You I said do. you want to know the truth. I do. We're and I'm going to, to find us. it regardless of whether I make that phone call or not. And I have enough us. faith to believe that you can find it regardless of whether I make you that phone call. We know. It may be we, the best way. We believe we know what I know happened. That, fine. We believe then we know what happened. Then my phone call may assist you in making it easier. It's not going to change the truth. What Christiane and even the investigators were unaware of was that Clayton had already been called into that same police station during the course of this interview. A separate investigation team had decided to conduct their own interrogation before making an arrest, which was so that Christiane couldn't alert her husband to their suspicions when she arrived home. Clayton initially denied wrongdoing, but later told investigators he had been slapping his daughter because she refused to eat, and that the slapping became harder over a period of time turning into strikes, but not because he was angry with his daughter, only because he couldn't get her to eat otherwise. He was arrested and charged with first-degree murder that same day. In 2015, he was convicted of his daughter's murder and rendered a life sentence. He spent four and a half years in prison before Wait, his conviction was overturned by the Court of Appeals in two Wait, what? I'm so co I, I Did I misunderstand what just happened? The slapping became harder over a...
Clayton had already been called into that same police station during the course of this interview. A separate investigation team had decided to conduct their own interrogation before making an arrest, which was so that Christiane couldn't alert her husband to their suspicions when she arrived home. Clayton initially denied wrongdoing, but later told investigators he had been slapping his daughter because she refused to eat, and that the slapping became harder over a period of time, turning into strikes, but not because he was angry with his daughter, only because he couldn't get her to eat otherwise. He was arrested and charged with first-degree murder that same day. In 2015, he was convicted of his daughter's murder and rendered a life sentence. He spent four and a half years in prison before his conviction was overturned by the Court of Appeals in 2019. He is currently released on bail awaiting his next trial. A primary focus of his appeals process was the incompetence and negligence of the Wasilla Police Department. There it is. On February 15th of 1993, and now we get to the main fucking course, dude. The northern city of Liverpool, England, would bear witness to one of the most shocking and horrific cases in its history. Police on Merseyside say that two-year-old James Bulger, who disappeared from a shopping precinct at the weekend, was horribly murdered and then dumped on a railway line. They say that someone must know the identity of the two boys who took James from the precinct. Inch by inch, the police have searched the railway line where two-year-old James Bulger's body was found yesterday. The scene is still protected from the elements for forensic work. The body itself was removed late last night. His uncle had identified him. It had been spotted earlier by four schoolboys. Wait. Wait, what the fuck? There was a genetic condition? What? Evidence of genetic condition leads to overturned murder conviction? The first time my knees ever started creaking in the colds, I walked up the stairs. I was eight years old. Allison says I was in elementary school. That was the first time at which I started experiencing nightly severe pain. Nine months. I also was diagnosed with type 3 Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, a genetic condition that affects connective tissue. However, the diagnosis arrived too late for the Allison's. My husband was arrested in November 2008, a couple days before I got the diagnosis. The cause of death was blunt force trauma. Prosecutors argued Jocelyn died of abuse from her father, but the Allison's have maintained that she fell down paddle stairs and hit a chair, an injury that wouldn't normally kill a child, but CJ Allison says their daughter wasn't normal. When my daughter was born, she appeared normal at first, but after four to six months, she started showing signs of something very serious. Allison believed Jocelyn suffered the same condition her mother was in in the process of getting tested when she died. When they tried to submit CJ's diagnosis as evidence, the judge forbade it from being mentioned when Jocelyn was never diagnosed and CJ's was a rule-out diagnosis. Oh my god. Wait, but he admitted to beating her, though. What the fuck? Wait, did JCS fuck this one up? Has Maybe that's why they took this video shot. down? Or was it like a... F Maybe he confessed because of cop manipulation? False confessions are not uncommon? Yeah. So he really is like, oh yeah, I beat her, but I didn't kill her. Cops can't you to admit to anything, let's be real. He didn't admit it, he just admitted to hitting her. Okay, but then what the fuck? JCS kind of made it seem as though like he literally beat her to death with his bare hands. Right? Am I crazy? Didn't... That was kind of implied, right? No? Okay, I misunderstood. Like... Damn, y'all are fucking JC as simps, dude. They didn't mention the condition at all. Well, this is new information, so he probably didn't know. I'm trying to figure out why. I I'm trying to figure out why they took the video down. This could be part of the reason. You know what I mean? Anyway, let's keep watching.
is playing. The blurred images of two youths seen taking James away are now all over the city. The public say detectives hold the key to finding them. They believe James was killed locally, then his abandoned body was hit by a train. We know it is a murder inquiry. There's, there's not as we'd first hope we were going to find James and return him to his parents. It is horrific what has taken place, and there must somewhere be somebody who will know the identity of the two boys who were seen with James. James's blue and mustard hood, seen here in a security video, has now been recovered. It had been missing from his clothing, but was found nearby. Police have set up a temporary base in the shopping centre. They're warning parents that other children could be vulnerable. For goodness sake, keep tight hold of your children. Poor James only went missing from his mother for a matter of seconds, and he'd gone and disappeared. It was a warning heeded as parents picked up their children from school. I've said to him that if he doesn't hold me hands, then, you know, an autumn man's going to take him and all that. It's on your own doorstep, isn't it? I mean, I come to Strand every day with my kids. Of course, it's right, it's right into everybody. The shadow of this murder is hanging heavily over Liverpool. As flowers built up around the scene, James's family have spent the day being counselled by specially trained officers. Murder conviction overturned for was still a man charged with killing 15-month-old daughter. <clears throat> White also threw out a 2009 admission of abuse from Allison, finding it coerced. Oh my God. Oh my fucking God, dude. The appeals court found that Standard wrongly placed the burden of proof on Allison to prove his innocence. Additionally, barring evidence that might have cast doubt on Allison's guilt, restricted his ability to defend himself, the appeals court said in its opinion. Evidence that there were other possible medical explanations for excessive bleeding was something that the jury should have heard. Hassle. This is a quote from the appeal. Shortly before trial, the state filed a motion for a protective order see seeking to exclude any mention of airless Donlow syndrome at trial. The state argued that the mother's diagnosis was inherently suspect because the mother had obtained the diagnosis after J.A.'s death. The state also viewed the diagnosis as too speculative. What the fuck? It's a genetic disease who gives a shit. If they're like already saying that like the daughter, there's something wrong with the daughter, there's something wrong with the daughter as fucking parents would know. And then they find out that well, that's crazy. No info. No, 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 no. This is not criticism of JCS. He didn't know the shit. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm talking about the court case. Like I'm, I'm talking about the judge's decision to uh, deny any mention of, of EDS. The baby gate and lack of supervision from the father is still suspicious, but yeah, the cops definitely fucked this up. Right, Dozens of bunches of flowers have been laid in response to a crime whose shadow is hanging heavily over the city. The appalling murder of a defenseless toddler. James suffered truly horrific injuries, said the police, before his body was dumped on a railway and hit by a train. The discovery of his remains has led to a massive public response. Detectives are tonight studying the evidence so far accumulated. But police still haven't traced these two youths, photographed leading James away by a security camera. Inch by inch, officers have searched the line today, trying to establish the exact sequence and timing of events. The inquiries have gone on all day, and they've been going on all evening. The search as urgent as ever for the vital clue that will lead the police to whoever killed a helpless two-year-old. Today the police investigating the murder announced a breakthrough in their inquiries. Following the abduction of James Bulger from the New Strand shopping precinct in Bootle on Friday the 12th of February 1993 and the subsequent findings of his body on the railway line in Walton on Sunday the 14th of February, two boys aged 10 years from Walton area have been arrested and are currently being interviewed by Merseyside Police at police stations on Merseyside. 
Today's announcement came after hundreds of calls to the incident room overnight following the first... Holy fuck, this guy said, I'm from Serbia and this murder was in my English textbook. I feel like England is, is so desperate for murders that they just like, one time a murder happens, they're like, we got to put it in an international textbook. I mean, I, I, from what I understand, this is like a horrific one. This is like a specific one, but... This case is taught in most English schools. Wait, what the fuck? Like, this is like a murder. It's a part of like history. Yo, I learned this in school too, but I'm from the UK. Wait, really? Screening on television last night of an enhanced video photograph of the two youths seen with James Nine months can no longer be shown for legal reasons. Like yesterday, keep being a dull piece of shit legend you are. Almost 27 years later, this surveillance image remains etched in the minds of the millions familiar with the case of James Bulger. On the afternoon of February 12, 1993, 10-year-old Jean Venables and Robert Thompson would enter a shopping mall in the northern part of Liverpool with the intention of kidnapping a small child, something they attempted not once, but twice. Inside a department store, a woman noticed that two boys were trying to get her two-year-old son's attention. Moments later, she realized he was missing. The woman began calling his name and ran outside, where she found Venables and Thompson beckoning the boy to follow them. When Venables saw the mother, he told the boy to go back to her and they both vanished. Mere luck had saved that child, but also sealed the terrible fate of another. Soon after the aborted abduction, Venables and Thompson were loitering around a candy stand when they noticed two-year-old James Bulger by the door of a nearby butcher's shop. With Bulger's mother momentarily distracted, they got the toddler to come with them. Venables then took him by the hand and led him away. Damn, dude, this kid's fucking 10 years old, but he looks evil. James and his abductors were caught by a surveillance camera leaving the mall at 3.42 p.m. By this time, James's mother, Denise, was panicking. She quickly found mall... Literally doing the trademark Kubrick stare, dude. Dude, what the fuck happened to these kids? How are they such Security psychos, personnel dude? and described her son and what he was wearing. They announced the boy's name over the loudspeakers, but there was no sign of him, and he was then reported missing to the local police station. After the boys had led James away from the mall, he began crying out for his mother. They ignored him and continued down to a secluded area near a canal where they dropped him on his head and left him on the ground crying. A woman passing by noticed the child but did nothing. The boys then called for James to come, and he still followed. His forehead was bruised and cut, causing his abductors to pull his jacket hood over his head to hide the injury. They then walked away from the canal and through a residential street, where one witness later reported noticing a small child crying while being forcefully led by two older boys. She didn't report the incident, but gave a statement five days later. I've had people say- Dude, for the record, like, you would never expect that to be a kidnapping, because it's literally 10-year-olds. Like, it's easy to just be like, oh, what the fuck was this person doing? What the fuck? Like, why didn't you tell the cops? But it's like, why would you ever think? Why would you ever think that? Ever. You would literally just assume that it's like brothers and the, the younger brother's just like fucking being a dick and crying or some shit. Or the older brother's like bullying the younger child. Like, you would never, ever in a million years report that as like something that is suspicious. It's because the kid's crying and shouting for his mom. Okay, but you're... What? Okay. So what? That's just exclusively hindsight. Seven months foggers. You would never ever in a... Dog. You would literally never think a 10-year-old is kidnapping someone. You are fucking so crazy. If you think you saw a 10 year old kidnapping like a four year old or whatever, you're literally out of your mind. <clears throat> no matter what happens, like, no matter what happens, they're fucking 10, dude. Are you kidding me? You would never think that. You'd just be like, wow, these 10 year olds are being dickheads to a, a smaller baby.
saying, why didn't someone do this and why didn't someone do that? But, you know, now the guilt, the guilt's there. I don't think I'll ever get this, this guilt. <laughs> I've seen them. I heard the baby crying. And I watched them. Oh, God, I watched them. I, I've got to look out this window every day. I <laughs> see these kids. <laughs> Go to bed and I see these kids. A second witness also oh noticed the God. trio while it's driving, so but only reported the incident when the story hit the front page of the national news three days later. I went to the police that same day, on the Monday, and reported the incident. And I said to the police at that stage, you know, I hope that it wasn't him, because I couldn't live with the thought that I could have done something about it. At some time between 5.45 and 6.30 p.m., Thompson and Venables brought the exhausted two-year-old to a railway. When they arrived, the boys hesitated, perhaps reconsidering what they were about to do, and briefly turned away from the embankment. But then they both turned back toward the privacy of the area, and the brutal torture and murder of James Bulger occurred. The boys splashed blue paint in the child's eyes, kicked him, threw bricks and stones at him, and stuffed batteries into his mouth. They then what? proceeded to hit James over the head with a 22-pound iron bar, which resulted in 10 skull fractures. All in all, the child sustained 42 injuries to his face, head, and body. Authorities later concluded that there was no way to tell which injury represented the fatal blow. There was also a sexual component to the crime as well, which was so disturbing that most news outlets refrained from reporting on it. Eventually, the two boys placed James's dead body across the train tracks in hopes of making the whole thing look like an accident. They then abandoned the scene before a train came and severed the toddler in two. With little to go on, Bulger's parents were initially the prime suspects, but when police saw the CCTV footage from the shopping mall, the story went nationwide and the search for Bulger intensified. His body was discovered two days after his disappearance. All of the instruments used in the attack were found strewn around the area, including the stolen tin of blue paint which was reported on the news. An anonymous phone call to the police then implicated John Venables and Robert Thompson as the killers. The caller told police that Venables and Thompson were both both absent from school on the Friday of the abduction, and that they had seen blue paint on the Yeah, I would put these kids in a cannon, probably, and just like shoot them out into the sun. There's just no, there's no saving these kids, dude. No shot. Send them out to space with Elon Musk. Let Elon Musk deal with them. Like, how the fuck do you become this, dude? At the age of 10, how do you become that? At the age of 10, how do you become that? I get, like, a lifetime of abuse and whatnot leads you to this kind of behavior at the age of, like, 26. You know, add on some additional uh, problems. 10, dude? Bad early socialization. Dude, that is... You saying that, especially what we know after the fact, makes it seem like a reasonable take. It's just like, it's so crazy. Fortnite does that? Yeah, back in 1993. Sleeve of John Venable's jacket. The police then visited both children's homes and discovered blood on Thompson's shoes and blue paint on Venable's jacket. Both boys were then taken in for questioning. He said that the two of you were in the strand and that you saw the little boy. We never. We never. That the God's honest truth? God's honest truth. I'm, I'm telling you that we never. He was too scared. He was probably too scared. And he said that you took him by the hand and led him out of the strand shops. Okay, the kid's name is Venables, dude. I'm starting to I'm starting to see a pattern here. Like Like with a name like that, it's just like you, you literally have like a villain name, you know what I mean? It's just It, it does. It has demonic energy.
it literally has demonic energy. What was the other name that we looked at before? By the way, remember how much? What was the other name? I remember from a while ago. No, it was it wasn't Draco? What the fuck was it? Lazarus. Yeah, Lazarus, dude. Literally, you name your child Lazarus, dude. They're, that kid's gonna fucking do shit. I mean, come on, bro. Lazarus, dude. Really? I just name your child Methuselah. Oh, it's the family name. Okay, well, regardless. Um, same shit. My little bro's friend is called Lazarus. Yo, watch out. Be on the lookout. Damien. Damien's kind of, ah. Eh. So. Fuck, I forgot what I was going to say. Let's keep going. We never. He's a liar. Calm down. Okay, I literally sound exactly like this kid when I do Aiden voice. Kyle is a fucked I'm up sorry. Man, I know we're not supposed TV to be lighthearted. This is a devastating case. But, like, you guys keep saying my accent is terrible, but it actually is my Aiden voice, like this kid's voice. Said yikes. Okay, I'm sorry. I know. I know. We're not making... I, like, it's an unacceptable time to do... It's an unacceptable time to be doing uh, uh, bravophobia. But it was just too close not to point out. Oh my gosh. Oh, no, don't get all right. It's all right. Come on, bro. It's all right. Dude, this Come fucking... On, by the way, I literally don't... I don't feel any empathy for this kid. I feel like he's just lying to fucking cops with with not a single fear uh, in his in his eyes or mind or he's just like literally crying lying it's just like I never got the boy oh, piece of shit I never killed someone yeah we was but we never saw any kids there I love you saying we never that. got any kids <coughs> so you were in Bootle New Strand yeah, was you in Bootle Strand yeah, we never got a kid mom we never <laughs> Mrs. Venables, would you, um, I must ask you not to get angry with it. A short while ago, as is detailed on your custody record out there, you had a conversation with your mum, and you then requested that myself and Dave Tanner come into the room. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And what was it you told us? That I killed James. He took him on the rail and shot him and started throwing bricks at him. Why did he throw bricks at him? No. And what, did it make him fall over? No. So, he's saying he threw him. I don't know, the same what do you do in this a situation of your parent? Uh, late term abortion, I think, probably. Like, what are you supposed to do? Act like that is not your child? Literal fucking hell spawn, dude. Bro, I'm telling you, this is like... This is like out of a movie, dude. This is like Omen. You know what I mean? What do you do? You, you bring a life onto this planet and it's literally the devil. Like, what are you going to do? People from this area are famous for stealing. Okay, dude. <laughs> I guess they, they were excited that their son was a murderer then. Venables was caught with kitty porn after being freed. Okay, dude, shut the fuck up. Are you serious? After 10, at just 10 years old, John Venables callously abducted and murdered James Walker at two years old. Wait. They were released at the age of 18. They let him out. His current new identity came under threat in February 2018 after James Bulger's dad, Ralph, launched high court proceedings against the order that allows him to live anonymously. James's mom does not support the proceedings and said her son's killer should keep his an anonymity to avoid vigilante justice. But the president, 
He was given a second identity following his release from prison in 2013, but he found himself back in a maximum category A jail, which he cannot identify for legal reasons. After being caught with vile child abuse images following a top secret police investigation. Are you fucking kidding me? Wait, is this in the video? Why are you guys yelling? Well, someone sent it to me. What do you want? Someone sent me the fucking link. I didn't think it was going to be in the video. And he didn't fall over. Yeah, he did fall over. And he just kept on getting back up again. He wouldn't stay down. What would say while he was doing all this? He was saying, stay down, you stupid dick. Why do you want him to stay down? I don't know. I wanted him dead properly. So we walked up to him and we were walking around with him and I took his hand. Well, whose idea was it to walk towards him? Mine. Was it? What did then it was Robert's idea to kill him. And we went outside to the canal. What for? I don't know. We said let's him throw him in the water. He was persuading him. He said kneel down and let's look at the water and all that, but he wouldn't. Because when we wouldn't get him down, Robert picked him up and threw him on the floor, and that's where he got his bump on his head. Where'd you go with him after that? The, the reservoir where that woman spotted us. Is young James walking with you by this time, or are you still having to pull him? Young James. He was walking with us. Was he upset, or had he made friends with you? No, he was all nice. I know the truth. I believe I, I know the I, truth. I was there. That's right. You wait. Correct, but I know there's a lot of things that have gone on. Yeah, well, do you know it was me that killed him? It wasn't. I never even killed him. <laughs> Bro, are you fucking kidding me? This kid. Dude, he's also a debate lord on top of everything else. He's like a torturer, a psycho, and a fucking debate lord. He's like literally debating an adult cop. What the fuck is going on here, dude? Why are their brains so well developed? Like, you're a child, dog. You're, you're 10 years old. Here's a fucking full-blown adult. Being like, oh, you did it. He's like, well, you weren't there, were you? Well, you fucking weren't there, were you? I never killed him. <laughs> hey, can I just join in any of the things I should know about? I'll be over in a few minutes if you just tell him the truth. Tell him to a break in his face. <laughs> I did not do it! Right, try and stop. Right, let's, we've got, we're getting there, aren't we? We're getting to the truth now. Yeah, well, I'm gonna end up getting out of the plane because I've got blood on me. He grabbed us the baby's hand and just walked around the strand. And then he let him go loose then. Did he? Well, when we were by the church, he let him go. And you were with John then? You shook your head. You shook your head? Yeah. I told him to take him back. You did as well? I told him to take him back. You told him to take him back? I don't know right, why. <laughs> no, you're Bro, not. Bro, 10-year-old kids engaging in premeditated murder and then, like, even a subsequent cover-up is just, like, impossible to fit in my brain. Like, they're 10 years old. Just do fucking Fortnite dances, dude. That's what 10-year-olds are doing. I mean, 10-year-olds literally watch Minecraft uh, compilations. Like, they don't... Like, it... They are... They're, like, behaving in, in this most vile way, like full-blown adults. You know what I mean? Even the way they're talking... Even the way both of these kids have, like, tried to originally lie to the police, like... I'm getting all the blame. We're just asking your son. We're yeah, to find we usually always get the blame. Wait a minute, Bobby. Listen. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> 
Just, just calm yourself down for a minute, okay? You all right? You said he wants us more. So what? What did you say to him? What did you say? You. We're going to try and find us, Mum. Where did you leave him then? In the reservoir place. I don't believe you would have left him there. You took him away from where the reservoir is and walked down somewhere else. Where? Going towards the police station. Like, even this, even this lie is so strange. Like, it's almost like they're saying, oh, no, I only assaulted him. I didn't actually murder him. You know what I mean? Like, like, how does he have the wherewithal to know just to say that he assaulted the kid and then the kid just fucking died? Like, if you're, if you're 10 fucking years old, like, you know what I mean? It's crazy, dude. They're 10 years old. How does he know to like lie about uh, like a like a smaller charge basically? You were a dumb kid on lol. I'm sorry, dude. Are you really saying in the chat that you would be smart enough as a 10-year-old to like cover up your tracks? Is that what you're Okay, there's something going on with these rocks. No ads. I have those like mineral things, those rocks. And I place them on top of one another and they keep falling at like really random times. The, the mineral rocks that you guys have sent me. The trials of John Venables and Robert Thompson commenced nine months later, and they were both convicted of murder. Okay, they're both fucked up, dude, especially this one. Just from the face. Okay? If I see that kid, like, you know what I mean? You, you go to a barbecue and you're like, your, your uncle's friend has a kid like that. You're like, nah, there's something wrong with that kid. Get the kid out of here. No, I don't care. He's 10 years old, dude. Nope, fuck that. That's, that is a scary looking kid, dude. Fucked vibes. Absolutely, disastrously fucked vibes, dude. This kid wouldn't allow him near a school, okay? Making them the youngest to be found guilty of the offense in over 250 years. Two days later, on Monday the 22nd of February, the boys were taken to South Sefton Magistrates Court in Bootle for a hearing. Media interest in the case was enormous. Television crews and photographers from all over the world came to Bootle to get a shot at the boys. Public anger too had been building for some time in Liverpool, both against the boys and the intrusiveness of the media. A menacing crowd gathered outside the court waiting for the boys to come out. Yeah, I take back everything I said about Minecraft stands, dude. I would much rather have like little 10 year old Zoomer babies running around being like, oh my God, that's fucking, you're triggering me or, you know, trigger warning, Hassan Neg, like Hassan earlier today talked about DID and that's really fucked up. You know, I'm so much better than whatever the fuck is going on here. You know, I would rather have them occupied with like disassociating into being dream or something. Let them go? As the boys left in the transit van, bricks were being thrown, people were running up to the side of the truck. Oh, they wanted to let him go so they could kill him, dude. That's crazy. Oh, they wanted to like let the little you're gonna fucking what are you gonna do? You're gonna murder a ten year old dude? Like I'm talking I'm talking a big game here, but like let's be real. I think it's good that they were, you know, uh, put through the criminal justice system in a more empathetic capacity. There's no capital punishment. Like, ultimately, that's what, that is what the right thing to do is. And I'm glad that the government was doing the right thing in that situation. And I'm not running anything. Because, like, I personally would have been like, yeah, no, throw them to the fucking crowd. Four months with the has chuds. Love you all.
I think you can easily rehab 10 year olds compared to fully adult killer. No, no, no shot. No, dude, that kid, like maybe one of them in a situation where you have two 10 year olds, both of them being like bloodthirsty psychopaths is unlikely. So one of them was less bloodthirsty of a psychopath than the other. Maybe that one can be rehabilitated, but both of them, fuck no. One of them is the mastermind, and that one is like, there's no, there is no way to medically fix something like that, okay? Sorry, it's just the fucking truth. What do I always talk about when I talk about like prison abolition and all this other shit? There are edge cases that you cannot fix. We happen to keep looking at the edge cases, which does not reflect the entirety of the criminal justice system. Murderers can be rehabilitated, but there are certain kinds of murders that are impossible to rehabilitate. Okay, antisocial personality disorders are unfortunately very hard to diagnose and very hard to figure out if they actually truly rehabilitated. Radlib Hassan, Radlib Hassan. What? They're literally 10. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. One of those fucking 10 year olds is a psycho, like straight up. This is why I meant it wasn't funny to joke about. This really shook people and it's still taught to people. Yeah, one of them is a fucking psycho that will never be rehabilitated. And saying that currently medical science that we have readily accessible cannot rehabilitate antisocial personality disorders is not a rad lib take. It's just the truth. You, you want me to lie and tell you that it's, it's not the truth? It's true. We currently do not know how to, one, appropriately diagnose psychopathy, and we also do not know how to appropriately rehabilitate psychopathy. Pedophilia as well. But. Hassle. I'm not saying murder those kids, but you're, you're going to probably have to keep them under uh, constant round the clock supervision. Source? I don't know, man. Psychopaths test. There's like a bunch of different uh, things that you can read about how difficult it is to criminally charged psychopaths uh like i i don't i don't know what like what what source to start off with i've read a lot about i look i i'm fascinated with sociopaths and psychopaths i, I so it's understandable it's like that you're asking for a source but i don't know what to like start off with what the starting point would be but probably like ron johnson's psychopath test is pretty good what you are stating is just incorrect really so it's actually easy to medically diagnose uh, psychopaths and sociopaths, specifically psychopaths. Well, it's the official Karl Marx, so he must be right. No shot. What you are stating is just incorrect. Go ahead. Please explain to me how I'm incorrect. I would love to hear. I would love to hear what official Karl Marx has to say. Oh no, I'm too high for this. MK Ultra 3579 exclamation mark MK Ultra 3579 at MK Ultra 3579 dot me dot twitch dot TV prisms. What you are stating is just incorrect. Oh no, I'm too high for this. I hate this. Yeah, you must be high if you think that it's like uh, easy to diagnose uh, people who have antisocial personality disorders, like who are criminally uh, or, or criminally in a criminal case diagnosing someone. There's actually a doctor that was studying sociopaths and realized he was one by looking at his own brain scan. Their brain scan, their brains are literally different. Such a bitch made move, by the way, 17 month subscriber to just be like, you're literally wrong. And then be like, oh, I'm too high. You are correct, but I don't like hearing that we should throw 10 year olds in prison. Okay. This does not reflect the 99.9% .9 of juvenile offenders. Okay. 99.9999999% of juvenile, off juvenile, juvenile offenders. I can't even talk have absolutely nothing to do with this case. I hear what you're saying, but you're not a doctor and you're not a psychiatrist. Okay, it doesn't matter. I know I'm not a doctor nor a psychiatrist, but what I'm saying about, uh, uh, about diagnosing uh, psychopaths 
is still unfortunately very difficult. Treatment of psychopaths is also unfortunately very difficult. It's true. I'm right. I don't know what to tell you, dude. Like. Here, I mean, here, this is from uh, the Journal of Royal Society of Medicine from 2004, but back then it says, even then, it says, no one doing research on personality disorder is satisfied with the current diagnostic systems. Like, first fucking line is about how 2004 Keck W, are you fucking stupid? Dude, then you send me a foolproof system of... Of, of diagnosis for, for psychopathy right now. It's literally one, currently untreatable. That doesn't mean it will always be untreatable, but it literally is untreatable. And also it's very easy, unfortunately, for people with antisocial personality disorders to be able to fucking evade like the diagnostic systems. Especially if you're an older, if, especially if you're an older psychopath, who has already gone on for uh, who has already like lived for an extended period of time you know how to show empathy you know how to manipulate the diagnostics okay this is from 2013 it says reducing psychopathic violence a review of the treatment literature psychopathy reflects a pathological form of personality that predisposes individuals who are at risk of perpetration of chronic by the way this doesn't mean that all psychopaths are violent i'm not saying that at all for the record they are overrepresented in corporate boards, government, and also in prison, but. Psychopaths and sociopaths are constructs of antisocial personality disorder. Their first lies in where the behaviors originate. Sociopathy comes from interactions in the social environment. Epigenetic psychopathy is genetic. So what's up, dude? Radlid defends child murder emotional. I'm not saying they should murder him. I literally said it's good that they are. I literally said it's good that they. <sighs> it's good that they didn't fucking, uh, you know, throw him into the crowd. There's currently no consensus on trying to diagnose psycho psychopathy. A lot of the guidelines are currently centered around its criminality rather than its medical prognosis. You're fucking... Oh, dude. Fuck you, dude. I saw. Okay. Yeah, it's top of the fucking hour, dude. Okay? Yeah. It's top of the hour. For the past three and a half decades, the psychopathy checklist revised and the self-report psychop psychopathic personality inventory revised have been the standard measures of diagnosis. Technological approaches can enhance these diagnostic method methodologies. The purposes of the paper is to present a state-of-the-art review of various technological approaches. Both of these, both of these checklists are routinely, routinely. This is the closest to correct you have read. What? Hassan, sometimes your takes aren't always right, except that dumbass. Bro, every single fucking paper that you guys, that we just read, proves I'm correct. I don't know why you're saying this. The last... This is incredibly recent, what, the, what you're sending me. Like, chat is making it seem like this has been the fucking law of the land. 
But it's from 2017. Images of prisoners' brain shows important differences. And even then, we still don't know. Diagnosing this stuff in a consenting patient is a lot different than in a potentially non-cooperative one. I know. Like, I, especially as... <laughs> especially as someone who is literally... Especially as someone who's literally read up on this a lot. That's why I'm, like, very frustrated by chat being like, you're fucking literally wrong. There are a profound amount of problems currently with the most common way of doing uh, diagnoses on who, is this, uh, who has antisocial personality disorder or not. Okay? I don't know why... I don't know why if fucking people are not like, I, I don't know why people are just not listening to what I have to say. I don't know what happened in your brains that you unironically think that like, okay, what I was saying is it's not easy to diagnose with the right medication regimen and biweekly check-ins. They're able to live semi-independently. Wow. That was the reason why you said I was wrong. I should ban you right now. You have to be high for thinking that like you, you started one of the worst fucking stun locks where I'm literally 100% correct. And every motherfucker in the chat started agreeing with you just to be what you're stating is just incorrect. You were wrong because you said it's impossible to diagnose. It, it is not, dude, it's not easy to diagnose is not, does not mean that it's a fucking 80% diagnosis rate, especially when it comes to criminal psychopaths. Okay. I mean, also, I personally mentioned monitoring, and that's the only thing we can do. And you can't correctly medicate psychopaths either. A doctor could potentially diagnose a so psychopath if a psychopath or an if someone with an antisocial personality disorder willingly goes to a doctor to fucking figure the shit out. But if you are already a murderer... You're not going to cooperate with a fucking doctor. That's the other problem. Yeah, this is true. You can't even diagnose a child with an antisocial personality disorder because uh, they haven't. That's something that happens when your brain is like fully fucking developed. <sighs> that's the other issue. Anyway. I guess what we learned is if you're too fucking high, don't immediately come like with a, dude, you're wrong. Anyway, I'm going to I'm going to fucking hit the ad break now. I forgot to run it cuz I got so stun locked, but Last bullet point on the study from 2020 says exactly what you've been saying. For many years psychopathy was considered impossible to treat. However, new studies are showing that although psychopaths are difficult to treat as they are often unpleasant, disruptive, non-compliant, they still show improvement if they receive adequate doses of treatment. Cognitive behavioral programs to treat psychopathy are currently being developed and evaluated. So they currently don't fucking they currently do not have a foolproof or even a method for, for successfully treating psychopath, psychopathy. Got it.
That's what you got from that? Yeah, it is what I got from that. Dude, this is one of the... This is one of the, like, most heavily fucking debated issues in criminal justice. And you motherfuckers literally just arrived at it yesterday. And you're over here talking like you know what the fuck you're talking about. It's so frustrating, dude. Like, I know we've been watching a lot of fucking murder investigations and shit like that, but that doesn't really make you an expert or someone who's, like, read anything on this. It's really annoying, especially considering, like, yeah, I don't really read a lot, but, like, this is one area where I, I have read a lot. And you are? Yes, I am! This is one of the few fucking instances where I, like, actually have done a lot of reading on. Like, a lot. beyond the normal amount of reading. Fuck me, dude. Reading gruesome murders, expert in cases of extreme neurodivergence. Wait, no. Not from reading gruesome murders, dumbass. I'm giving you specific... I'm giving you specific shit. It has nothing to do with gruesome murders. Transit van Why are chatters doing on the this? Side with their fists. The boys I know didn't like that one bit. There's been a backlash against horror videos as Britain searches for answers in the wake of the James Bulger murder and the life sentences on his schoolboy killers. The case has already split the church and the government in a damaging row over who's to blame. But there's alarm now with a death threat from an uncle of little James. New flowers today marked painful memories of the Bulger trial as politicians and churchmen blamed one another in their search for reasons for the murder. Feelings everywhere were running high today, nowhere more than in a phone-in on BBC Television's Good Morning with Anne and Nick programme, when James Bulger's uncle, who was the one called to identify the child's body, threatened to kill the two boys. Looks to me like everyone's making excuses for them. And there is no excuses, Anne. They took the child, they battered them to death, and if they don't stay in jail forever, if they ever get out, we'll be waiting. And when we get hold of them, we'll kill them. Why did they do it? Jesus you know, Christ, what, I mean... What purposes are, uh, What was in their minds to do it? Well, obviously, we couldn't answer that question um, at that time. In the Commons, some MPs struggling to find any kind of action to express their revulsion turned on horror videos that might have influenced the boys. The children had watched cartoons in this video shop straight after the killing. A month before, John Venable's father had rented Child's Play 3, a mainstream 18-rated black comedy showing a demonic doll being battered to death. The Bulger trial judge surprised the police investigating the case when he suggested violent videos may have played a part in the case. The police said they had no evidence to suggest it. However, responding to criticism, Sky Television said it's dropping tomorrow night's planned screening of Child's Play 3, while another video chain said they were burning 10,000 copies. The youngest murderers this century were driven at speed to an indefinite future in custody, detained at Her Majesty's pleasure. The sentence that has been passed is the only sentence that the court could pass. They recognised that, but no sentence the court could pass would ever bring James back, and nor, in their view, could it ever properly punish those two boys for what they did. They were both given an indefinite sentence, which has no maximum, but has a minimum determined on a case-by-case -case basis. In this case, it was just eight years, and despite public outrage, they would end up serving this minimum sentence, and were each released in 2001, when they were both 18 years old. Lord Wolfe has decided the tariff should expire today. He says the boys, both 18, are genuinely remorseful, and further detention wouldn't be constructive. No it was a terrible offence, but they were only children. They were only just criminally responsibility, criminally responsible when it occurred. And it has to take into account the undoubted progress which they've made. 
James Bulger's mother, Denise Fergus, said she was shocked and disgusted by the decision. It means her son's killers could be out in a matter of months. I'll never forgive them for what they've done, never. I'll take the hate for them too to my grave. It's always for their side, you know, they were only ten and it's just excuse after excuse for them all the time. They're not considering James. That's fucking psychopathic too. It's just like... Oh, Jesus mm. Christ. James isn't here anymore, but them two are. They were given new identities and granted legal anonymity for life due to the public fury that surrounded the case and the danger of citizens hunting them down in order to take vengeance. In 2010, John Venables was taken back to prison for downloading child pornography of male toddlers. He served three years in prison and was released in 2013, only to be brought back again four years later. After a pedophile manual that provided instructions on having sex with kids was discovered on his computer. He was sentenced to three and a half years in prison. They just don't want him in the There you fucking go, dude. There you go. We read some of it already, but like, that dude is not treatable, man. He's just not. He's literally not. He's not. There's nothing. You can't do anything. I'm not saying you should murder him or anything like that. The state should not. But like, that person cannot help themselves. And currently, Unfortunately, and this is something I always mention as well, there is no way to treat that person. There is no successful way to treat that person with our current medical science. There might be in the future, but right now there isn't. They okay. So what does you is turn them back into the public? And I think it's wrong, you know, I'm more fearing now that someone is going to mistake him someone else's venables and do someone who's innocent harm. That's my biggest fear now. Do you trust that the authorities can monitor him properly? No, definitely not. He couldn't they monitor him the first time. What makes them so sure they're going to monitor him now? They haven't got a clue. I think they're not doing the jobs properly. They've got jobs there to do and they're not doing them. You know, they let him slip through the... Psychopathy is treatable. Look at the doctor who found out he's a psychopath. Did he go home and murder his wife after a brain scan? No. Are you fucking stupid? Do you think that like being a psychopath automatically means you're going to start being a violent psychopath? When did I ever say that? That's not even a good bait, dude. Shut the fuck up. The fingers the first time round, so no doubt it's, it's going to happen again. He got away with so much. He's going to think he's untouchable again, and he's going to go and do even worse. I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. John Venables, now these, these orders, these anonymity orders are very rare. There was only about four, I think. There's Mary Bell, the child killer from the 60s. Hmm. She got one to protect her own daughter. And I kind of think, again, fair enough. Mm. But John Venables, how many times does somebody have to keep committing a crime? Because what's happening is that his anonymity is protecting him from the crimes that he... You, it, mm. So every time he does a crime, we don't know who he is. And then he comes back into society. Yeah. Does he meet people who don't know what his sure. background is? Mm. You know, and I think he's now committing these crimes as an adult. Mm. He's making his choice to commit these crimes as an adult, therefore he has no further right to anonymity. Mm. It's quite interesting. Um... It would come as no surprise that the most prevalent question surrounding the case was just how in the world this could even happen. How could two children at such a young age hurt another in such a cruel and horrific manner? The trial had not sought out what could have been the motivation, and this therefore remained a source of much speculation long after. This home video was taken at a school party six months before the killing. Robert Thompson is the little boy circled. Dude, stop advocating for chemical castration. Are you fucking insane? That is a horrifying, torturous, inhumane uh, punishment, dude. Speaking of chemical castration, uh, they used to do that in England, as a matter of fact. So, uh, you know. Even to heroes. What shocks is his size and childishness. His family life was unhappy. A social work report after the killing revealed that his father was a violent drunk who had disappeared. 
I'm talking about Alan Turing chat. Yeah. He took his own life, right, afterwards, because of the chemical castration. Appeared. His mother had subsequently attempted suicide. She too drank heavily. He was the fifth of seven brothers who grew up afraid of each other. It was alleged that they assaulted and tied each other up. John Venables came from a more secure home, but something was wrong and his education was failing. A teacher from his previous school wrote a report in which she described his disturbed behavior. How, among other things, he attacked other children, hung himself upside down from coat pegs, lay under chairs and stuck paper all over his face. Public sentiment refuted the claims that both Thompson's abusive background and Venable's exposure to violent videos may have been a predominant cause, claiming that many children come from adverse backgrounds and many more watch the same age-restricted material before they come of age, yet the overwhelming majority of these children never come close to committing these types of offenses. A popular psychological viewpoint emerged just over a decade later, being that this was a case where two children with rare yet similar psychological makeup happened to cross paths and it was their own influence on each other that became the motivation to commit the crime. The preceding argument that most children who emerge from adversity in fact become decent people was agreed with, yet this was explained through the notion that most of these children come across mediating factors in their journey, and this provides them with an alternative and more virtuous direction. This can be a teacher at school, a friend that comes from a good home, or some type of program that provides a sense of belonging and structure. The argument is that rather than finding these external sources of correction, Venables and Thompson found each other. Two individuals who for their own unique reasons were so alienated from the primary values of modern society that an idea in- Yes, they castrated Alan Turing for being gay, okay? They didn't castrate him for being a pedophile or anything. They castrated him for being gay. He chose castration over going to jail. He was gonna go to jail after fucking literally like breaking uh, hella Nazi codes. That's what the UK did to him, okay? He had the option of, he was a hero, uh, inventor of, like, the modern computer, visionary mathematician. He's known as the uh, father of computer science and artificial intelligence. He's a cryptologist, a mathematician, and they fucking... Chemically castrated him. Now they put him on a banknote. 50 pounds banknote, I guess, but. He ended his life at the age of 41 by eating an apple laced with cyanide. Because. He had the option, either he was going to get chemically castrated or go to jail, and he chose chemical castration. It is incredibly inhumane. It's incredibly fucked up. You cannot do that to people. Okay? Alan Turing. Also, there was a really good movie about his life, too. You can do it with the child molesters law? No, you can't. You can't do it to anyone. You shouldn't be able to do it to anyone. You should not be... The Imitation Game? Is that what the movie was? Yeah, it's very good. Very good movie. You can't do that to anyone. The government should not ca uh, engage in capital punishment, and the government should not chemically castrate people. Chemical castration with pedophiles is different from homosexual slash normal people? No, it doesn't matter, dude. No, dude. Okay, like, let's start torturing people, too, then. Why do you think... Do you think torture is acceptable, then? If someone has murdered someone, can you torture them? You can't. A lot of you are looking for vengeance, not justice. Justice is not about vengeance. Okay? I think we joke too much about me, like, throwing people into volcanoes and shit. That, like, chat needs to remember what my point of view is. Like, my, what my actual point of view is on criminal justice.
But if it's a violent child molester in question, what if castration gave the person a normal ability to live a normal life? That's a psychotic take. That's not a real thing. You should watch the ped uh, pedophile doc about uh, the pedophile dial by pedophile pedophile doc by Louis Thoreau. It's about how you can't release some people even after they serve their term in prison and the life they live in a specialized housing area. I can't even fucking talk. All right, I'm going to finish. Involving the torture and murder of a two-year-old child was encouraged rather than admonished. 